numbers end up. It is. Good evening. At this time, I would like to call the August 25th receivers meeting with the public to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So good evening, everyone, and thank you for attending tonight's meeting. Uh, to begin, I, I will, I know a lot of you probably heard about an accidental incident, incident that happened here at Chester High School on the loading dock that has been, uh, I, I want to commend the district staff, Dr. Parkinson team, and our maintenance department for quickly responding and you know, being very, very proactive in ensuring that everyone was safe and secure, everything was safe and secure. The incident, once reported, was resolved within a matter of 27 minutes. So that is a plus. The police were notified they were here on scene, uh, you know, fairly quickly, and we were able to uh, allow them to do their jobs and get that god awful, uh, those god awful pieces of equipment off of school premises fairly quickly. So all, I want to just reiterate that we, the Chester Upland School District, we had always uh, been a little proactive in that with everything that's going on here in the country. So we had already had plans and talks about Alice training for all of our faculty and staff members. That was already, you know, in the works. Uh, I know uh, on Tuesday our staff members received their online tutorials and everything related to that. Prior to us, uh, again, knowing that this incident, well, we didn't know. It was a surprise. A surprise incident happened. We also have some <coughs> training that was already pre-scheduled with the Chester Police Department and Delaware County SWAT team to do some active shooter training that will be live on site. So we're, we're, we're ahead of the game in regards to uh, something like that. The other thing that I want to make mention, and I know that it may come to a surprise to many, but we did have a conversation today with uh, the Department of Education as it pertains to a building on 14th and Edgemont Avenue. And we needed to do some things fairly quickly to ensure that we are and remain compliant for the opening of school, which is Monday, August 29th. So I, um, this, this can potentially be a, a temporary thing. We were in the midst of having some community input on it. But again, please note we had to move expeditiously to be compliant with PDE as it pertains to ensuring that school can open on Monday and also as it pertains to some funding that the district will receive. So at this time, I would like to announce the name of a new building here in the Chester Upland School District. And I hope I don't get it wrong because we kind of just named it. We were with the board a minute ago. But it will be called Edgemont Scholars Academy. So our new building is called Edgemont Scholars Academy at 14th and Edgemont, the old Widener Partnership Charter School. And again, we most certainly are open and willing to have dialogue with the community because the opportunity for us to rename a building, we can do that in the future, but we need to do what we need to do to be compliant and ready for our babies to come to school on Monday. So on Monday, we will be welcoming students K through eight to Edgemont Scholars Academy. All right. So I'll move right into the superintendent's report, Dr. Parkinson. Good evening, school board members, Receiver Nichols, uh, Attorney Jarman. Good evening, members of uh, the community, cabinet members. Um, I'm going to start the uh, report with actually um, addressing the questions that were raised last week. Um, give me a moment to pull that up. All right. So, um, first question that was um, addressed at school board meetings, uh, the, the school board committee meeting, was uh, what is the um, why is there a report for pupil services? The response to that is the pupil service department is related to special education and student services provided to students throughout the school year and summer. This is part of the restructuring. Dr. Whitaker served as interim this past school year during the talent search for his role. 
We are pleased to announce that Dr. Wilson will assume the, the position at the beginning of September due to his obligations with this current employer. However, he has begun the process of meeting with key district staff to make this transition. This will include an overall assessment of the department's needs and a plan, to action, a plan of action to begin implementation immediately. The district recently approved a special edu education plan that will be shared throughout the school year and to keep all of you informed and the progress. Um, second question was, enrollment was also mentioned. Um, the Office of the Assistant Superintendent currently oversees reporting on enrollment data for data quality and management. Our most recent report indicates the following for enrollment district-wide, um, and I'm going to share this with you. So currently, year-to-date, we have 3,178 students, and this is from the past, um, there was 3,000, excuse me, 2,700 students. So um, we're obviously growing, which was the goal, you know, coming into the district. We wanted to, to grow. Um, and have our students return back to the Chester Upland School District, and that is uh, definitely happening now. Um, enrollment at Chester High School stands at 855 students. Chester Upland School of the Arts, we currently have 439 students enrolled. STEM High School, our STEM Academy, has 487 students enrolled. Main Street Elementary has 302 students enrolled. Stetzer Elementary, we have 253 students enrolled. Uh, Toby Farms Intermediate, we have 378 students currently enrolled. In our Digital Learning Academy, which is our online school right now, we have 81 students who are enrolled. And Edgemont Scholars Academy, we have 383 students enrolled. So that is the current enrollment for the Chester Upland School District. Um, third question um, related to the DCI report excuse me, DCIU report. Um, as um, our liaison board vice president, Fred Green, he said he would be providing a report in September. Um, so you'll have that report then. Uh, receiver superintendent, assistant superintendent and operations of director, director have concluded walkthroughs of all buildings, regularly preparing, this is a question that was related to, are the buildings ready for the upcoming school year? So the assistant superintendent, receiver Nichols and myself, along with the field facilities, we've conducted walkthroughs um, and we're going to say that the buildings are closer to being ready and will be ready by the start of the school year. Um, as far as the cleaning, and that's what we're talking about, you know, we want to make sure all the lawns are manicured. Um, we, we want to make sure that the, the, the lawns are trimmed, our grass is trimmed. Um, we just want to make it curb, have the curb appeal that it needs when, when our students return on Monday. And I'm going to tell you that we're going to have that done. Um, custodians, the team will be working over the weekend to get all this stuff ready just to make sure it's um, all together. So as far as the cleaning of the buildings that has taken place, um, you know, we're, we're going to obviously continue to clean and, and, and make sure that things are well kept throughout the school year, but we're ready to go uh, for the start of the school year. All right. Um, there was a question regarding the value um, of the cheerleading, the cheerleaders at Ch in the Chester Open School District. I want to say that, um, you know, every member of, of the school board and, and uh, every member who is sitting before you here, the administration, Teachers, we value the, um, the talent that the cheerleaders bring to this community, to the school district. Actually, they opened up convocation for us, and that was planned prior to last um, week's meeting, but they actually opened up the convocation for our students, and I mean for our staff, um, as we celebrated the return to the school year. So they did a fantastic job. We love them, we respect them, and you know, it's all about seat pride. That is one of, truly one of our points of pride in this, in this community, I would say. Um, you, you can say that usually you go to a high school basketball game at halftime, usually people are going to get their popcorn and, and their snacks at that time. But people know that, you know, Chester High School cheerleaders are coming out to perform, they're going to sit in their seats and be still. So um, I just want to reiterate, you know, the love and respect for our cheerleaders. Um, uh, there's a question about iReady. Um, iReady is a renewal for the, for, for the 1450 Ed Edgemont campus now that the students and families are a part of the Chester Upland School District. So it wasn't just a renewal for 14, for Edgemont, the Edgemont Scholars Academy. It was a renewal for the, um, and the, the um, throughout the, the district, I mean, the other, uh, other buildings as well. Not in, confirm, okay. It's a renewal for the district. It's a renewal for 1450. New, thank you. Renewal for 1450. Thank you, Chief Academic Officer. <laughs> Appreciate that. That's what we do, though. We, you know, we, we take care of each other. Just, so, um, new for the district, but it's been at Edgemont Scholars Academy. All right, thank you. All right, um, 
So the purchase of program materials through the Office of Academics aligns to meeting the needs of our students. The district is committed to educational programming that promotes continuous improvement for teaching and learning. There is an, expect, excuse me, an expectation of accountability for teachers, administrators, and support staff throughout the district. And this was about the seamlessness of, of the curriculum throughout the district. So that was the questions from um, last board meeting. I don't know, I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, but I'm going to give the superintendent's report now. And I'm going to read it. I usually just go off the top of my head, but I'm going to just read, the, read some prepared notes for you and we'll go from there. Um, <clears throat> the 22-23 school year is finally upon us. We're incredibly excited to start the new school year. On August 16th, we welcomed our newest family members to the Clipper ship. The Chester Upland School District hosted over 70 new staff members at our staff orientation. It was a wonderful sight to see a room filled with many eager and excited new members ready to serve the students of the Chester Upland School District. On August 23rd, we welcomed all of our staff back to the Chester Upland School District where we held our convocation. This year, we opened the festivities by discussing our theme for the 22-23 school year, which is for the betterment of our children. This year, we will be intentional in ensuring our students receive everything they need to succeed. For the past two, two and a half years, we've dealt with many distractions that often forced us to remove many of the joyful and vital events that occurred in schools for our students. Our goal will be, will be to get back to making fantastic memories for our students while addressing all of our other social, addressing all of their social, emotional, and academic needs. All right. During the convocation, the staff was treated by several performances. The Chester High School's world-famous cheerleaders started their performance with three amazing cheers that excited the staff. The cheerleaders were followed by Chester High School's songbird, Siani Williams. She sung the song, A Great Rendition of Rise Up, that moved the crowd. We were also treated by our Theater Guild students who performed a piece from their upcoming play, Romeo and Juliet. Some amazing dancing by our students highlighted this performance. Finally, our students' participation concluded with a fantastic motivational speech from our keynote speaker, Z Granberry, who will ser also serve as our junior class student board representative, so you will all have the opportunity to meet Ms. Granberry. Uh, the students quickly reminded all of us who were in attendance why we love what we do as educators. Our staff will be filled um, with professional development for the remainder of the week, and that's what's been taking place. They've all been going through PD, which has been fantastic. Uh, student orientations have been taking place in the various buildings across the district. Students have been receiving their uniforms that will be worn on day one. The uniforms will have more of a relaxed fit for, for students who actually provided their input on what they, wanted them to, what they want the uniforms to actually look like. We have always recognized the importance of student voice. Together, everyone will accomplish more. Um, next piece was this year our staff will be participating in various trainings that will be focused on school safety. Currently, all of our staff members are completing an online ALICE training, which stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, Evacuate. The, ac the acronym represents the various action steps that will occur in the event of an active shooter in a building. Along with ALICE training, we will have various professionals come in to facilitate training for our staff. Finally, it's not really final because I do have something else after that, but on August 29th, our first student day, We'll return to the, we will return to the tradition of the ringing of the bells. We're asking all of our community members to come out to be present and cheer our, on our students as they arrive for the first day of the 22-23 school year. So we're asking everyone in attendance this evening and those at home who are viewing this live to please come out and spend some time with our students, cheer them on. We'll have some bells, some pom-poms. It's going to be an exciting day as we welcome our students. Um, and then I just want to take, and I don't need a script for this, um, I want to just take this last opportunity to thank um, Dr. Pless and the HR department um, for the amazing job that they've done this year. Um, we're three to five, well, three teachers short of being fully staffed, about five, to, um, you know, just people in the district. So she's done an amazing job. Um, I, I can tell you what's really been exciting to, to you know, to have happen at Toby Farms last year. I think we, there was, we were missing a math teacher. Um, we had teachers who were coming in and providing subs, but we have teachers, math teachers in all of our buildings right now. Um, it's just an amazing job as you look at what some of the, some of our neighboring school districts, one that's, you know, 10 miles down the road, there, there, I think there are 40 teachers down right now. I think it was up to 40 teachers, they said. So for us in the Chester Upland School District to be close to fully staffed, I mean, it's, it's, it's just an amazing thing, and that's something that truly, truly needs to be celebrated. Yeah. Dr. Plus, I want to publicly thank you for the hard work, and I'm talking about Saturdays and Sundays working to get this done. I mean, around the clock. So yeah. thank yeah. you for all you've done. Yeah. Yeah.
see if the nipples was a bit long, but that concludes my report for tonight. Well, you took my thunder. Oh, I was going to give I, I that staff up there. I'm going to sneak it in a little bit. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll throw this one. We of of uh, a new staff. Well, I guess I don't know if it's a new. But we actually have, and I see a retired teacher that actually taught me in the audience. Another retired teacher who taught me actually came back to oh. teach and will be teaching this year. So we're excited about that. So I'm putting it out there. You know, if you want to come back, you know, we got three more <laughs> <laughs> vacancies. <laughs> we can find a place for you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Parkinson, for the report. Um, I don't think we have our student rep this evening. Next, okay, next month, so that'll be next month. And, and just to, well, well, I'll take the student rep spot since I'm a little, I look a little young. Um, <laughs> we're going to do some things differently this year to keep you all very, very informed and to have this be like a normal school board meeting, right? So, of course, we have our student reps. Uh, each month uh, throughout this academic year, we'll be showcasing great things at each board member. One of our schools will come and present some things to you. We'll be talking about our students of, students of the month. We'll be talking about our honor roll students. We're going to just do some very, very exciting things, you know, to showcase students because what's the theme, Dr. Parkinson? This is the commercial That's right. practice. For the betterment of our students. That's what we're doing. It's all about all right. our students. Uh, yeah. For the betterment of our students, we're going to get it done this year, so we're excited about that. Presentations, do we have any presentations, cabinet members? And, and we did have one on the agenda that was um, Mr. Mr. Freeman. Mr. Freeman. Now he would, he said Mr. Freeman to share what he's, the, the ordinance is, he didn't bring the copies this month, so mm -hmm. he's gonna present next month on the ordinance. That's ordinance. fine. But um, you said you would just give this community some information about it. Mr. Freeman, could you step to the uh, microphone here? And, you know, being 413, you guys might can build to something if you want. <laughs> that's, all, that's, all, that's all on the agenda. No? Okay. Um, like, you know, my name is Mark Freeman. I'm with Lakes Local 413. Um, we serve over uh, 100, 1,000 members, and 75% of them either are from Chester or have been from Chester. So I stand here before you today asking that the school board would put on um, responsible contract and ordinance. Um, that is an ordinance that allows you to do your fiduciary responsibility um, at the highest level and not be bound and tied to the lowest responsive bidder. And in that responsible contract, the ordinance is language about apprenticeship. And I've been speaking with Dr. Parkinson and it's something that we've been working in the building trades that we are trying to work something with Chester to, bring, to assure good paying jobs and careers for the students that they leave Chester High School. So that, that's my little spill, and next month we'll lay it all out. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. <laughs> At this time, I would like to approve the minutes for the meeting on July 28th. I hereby approve the minutes of the previous meeting for July 28th. All right. At this time, again, we're, we're trying to get into what we have been discussing for the past few months, the new structure of our meetings. We're going to move back to uh, having public comment on action item only. So at this time, any action item in any category, please step to the pole the, well, the microphone. State your name and address for the record for action items only. There is another opportunity for you to have general public comment at the end of the meeting. Um, but action items only. Going once, uh, twice. <laughs> oh, sign in sheet. I'm sorry. How about that? That was part of the agreement. That's is that for general comment? Mr. Drummond, that's for general comment, right? Three minutes, of course. Yeah. Thank you, sir. For the agenda, I oh, have to remember. My name is Jean Arnold, and I am at 2601 McCary Street. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. I don't have any questions for action items, but I want to congratulate um, Dr. Pless on such a Herculean job. Um, I agree that this is a 
first time maybe in a long time we've had such a full staff here at our district. And so I just want to applaud you because America has a problem finding teachers. And so I am just so excited that you've been able to fill some of those slots. Thank you. And uh, for E1, I think it is, uh, it's the Wilson reading instrument that we've purchased. I have heard an awful lot about the Wilson reading program, and I want to say thank you so very, very much, whoever is responsible for bringing that to the district. And when we get to that particular item, I would like to ask if you could talk about some of the merits of the Wilson reading program and some of its shortcomings, because I know it doesn't do everything that we want it to do. Uh, and I'm putting you on the spot, Dr. Sutton. You are. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sorry. I just want to hear more about the Wilson meeting program. That number five went out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. And again, uh, I know we had discussed. Dr. Sutton's well prepared, of course. Yes. But uh, when I know you, you myself, the superintendent of schools, and we can invite Dr. Sutton. We can add that to our agenda if you like. But I'm sure when he comes up, he's going to give a very descriptive, you know, narrative as to what his agenda items are. He can Google it. <laughs> Right. All right. So, Dr. Sutton, we'll have you up for your uh, action items for our education. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Mosley. Okay. Is this open for all time? No, this is just action items. So, so I, I guess I should ask that. Is your question related to the agenda or is it general public comment? No, these are related to the agenda, but I thought you were going to call people after they've heard how they to do that. Yeah. Okay. Th this, okay. So, the next person will be Ms. Karen Meyer. No action items, just general. So we probably need to get two signing sheets. Well, oh, not you. I'm looking that way. Two. 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 Yes, please. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Ms. Charlotte Beverly, is it general comment or action item? No. Okay. Ms. Mosley. Good evening, Denise Mosley, and my folio number is listed on the sign-in sheet. Um, the one question I have is under the personnel agenda. Uh, I think it's B1. Okay. There is a position um, listed for a leadership development coach. And I thought we already had someone in that position within the district. Are we hiring a second leadership development coach? Okay. So anytime we talk person, I always look at the solicitor and tell him to tell me to shut up when I, I can't talk. I can tell you, Ms. Mosley, that we only have one position, one leadership development coach, and it will only be one person in that position. And my second question from the agenda items, I think it's B2, and it was a summer payment for summer, but it was for $14.50. Yes. So uh, that particular action item, and one thing I want to say about $14.50, that summer payment, there was a, there was a uh, reserve fund that came with the charter school. Okay. So those dollars actually come out of that reserve fund, but this was for an individual that participated or, or worked during the summer program that was already scheduled when Widener Partnership Charter School had developed it uh, last academic year. So the proceeds for this are from Widener dollars. This is not district dollars. Correct. They just, okay, Correct. I just wanted to make sure. And I think that was it. Um, do you want us to say um, comments for superintendent's report for public side? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we have no other persons listed on the sign-in sheet. Dr. Sutton, if you're ready. And I think you can, I think we switched it now. We're going to get it together. If you want to, you know, the camera, the camera's better that way, right? And if I could just ask, if we could, you know, Dr. Sun, I know you're going to do it, but give just a little description as to what we're proposing tonight for the public safety. Sure. Thank you. For 
receiver Nichols. I have 12 items for tonight. Uh, the first item, A1, is approval to purchase iReady for um, ESA. I'm call it ESA. Um, we have previously purchased it for the district, but this is a renewal for Edgemont. A2, approval to purchase flu flutal phones or recorders for um, Edgemont Academy. You'll see in Esther's that we also have this request for our other schools. A3, approval to purchase power school student information system. We are looking to switch from eSchool in year 23-24 to power school. Okay. So again, A3 is um, approval to purchase PowerSchool SIS system to replace our current eSchool system where we store all student information. A4 is approval to purchase the Mathia Flex program for STEM and Chester High School. Um, these are math um, supplemental um, um, digital resources that are being used at STEM and Chester as part of their CSI plan. It really is a renewal for both schools. Uh, A5 is approval to purchase Dreambox Reading Plus for STEM and Chester High. Um, this again is a reading program to support, supplement our current reading program used at both high schools. Again, this is a um, re-up of that program as well. <coughs> approval for teaching, leading, and succeeding to provide professional development at Toby Farms. Um, this is an organization that supported us last year through certain initiatives throughout the district that we focused only on Toby as part of the CSI plan with differentiating instruction uh, throughout the school. A7, this, it's also a year long process. Um, A7 is approval to purchase the positive action curriculum for 1450 or for um, Edgemont Scholars Academy. <laughs> Had to fix that. <laughs> A8 is approval for Edmonton to provide instructional program for K-5 virtual students for the 21-22 school year. We had a contract with them um, last school year, but we went over by 17 students, so we do owe for, for that. Um, and that comes around $17,000. A9, approval to enter an agreement with U.S. Medical to provide one-on-one -on -one support and psychological services. Um, Dr. Whitaker, you can share if you have anything about that. Um, that is for one-on-one -on -one services for our students in special education, it's in their IP, uh, and for one school psychologist. Okay. And it is a 60-day contract as we're going to go through another process. I just want to make that note for the record. A10, approval to purchase unique learning system, ULS, for students receiving special education services for autism and life skills at the elementary and middle school levels. Again, I don't know if you have anything to chime in there, Dr. Whitaker. Uh, yes, that program is um, widely used in Delaware, Chester, Montgomery County for students uh, with autism. It's an ADA program. It, it's uh, research-based. This would be a great um, tool for our students uh, with autism and our low incidence students. Uh, A11, approval for Blazer Works to provide nursing services for building support and one-on-one -on -one nursing medical services for students in need of one-to-one -one nursing services. I think that's self-explanatory there. And lastly, um, approval for the renewal of HMH digital curriculum licenses for history, chemistry, English, and geometry courses at Chester High School. So we're just renewing what we currently have there. So that concludes the education agenda for us. Thank you, Dr. Sutton. At this time, I hereby approve education agenda items A1 through A12. Dr. Plus.
on, I will be um, requesting approval for personnel agenda items B1 through B6. <clears throat> B1 is approval of appointments, salary adjustments. Do you want me to explain all, even though it's under B1? It's personnel. Uh... Okay. So appointments is kind of self-explanatory appointments. Um, salary adjustments are contractually obligated in our professional contracts so those individuals who have either moved across based off of their education attainment level, so if they move from masters um, and got like a masters plus 15, um, as well as those individuals who may have had previous public school teaching experience. So again, those are contractually, um, contractual obligations. Reassignments, movements throughout the district, um, resignations, a termination, leave of absences, an additional 10% of their salary for working throughout the summertime. Again, a contractual obligation in our professional contract. Um, for our STEM Academy grade level PLC team leaders, so this is through the uh, CSI plan for um, STEM Academy. Um, fall coaches, so as the school year starts, we do have our sports starting back up. Um, we do have a couple individuals who have obtained tenure throughout the district, so that indicates that these individuals have been in the district for at least three years um, and have had satisfactory ratings for three years. So we do have three individuals who have been awarded tenure. And then, um, sadly, we did have a staff member who passed away over the summertime, so the final one is for the bereft of life. B2, approval for payment of the 2021-2022 summer programming at uh, Edgemont Scholars Academy. So this was actually something that was on the board agenda last month as well. We just, there was one individual who was left off, so this is just that approval. As the receiver indicated, this is to be paid through the wider reserve fund. Um, B3, approval to contract with Delta T Group. So Delta T was a company that um, the previous uh, Widener Scholars Academy had utilized. However, they contract on an as-needed basis. So as we start the school year, it's close to full staff. We are also in preparation of the fact that some of our staff may need to take some days off. We may have some instances for FMLA leave so that we do not overwhelm our current staff and they have to provide class coverages. This company will assist us in providing substitute services for the various um, groups of individuals that are listed. Um, B4 is an approval to award Mr. Anthony Moss with the stipend for the 2022-2023 school year. Mr. Moss will serve as our compliance lead for the Chesterton School District. So um, he will serve as the individual that will be responsible for ensuring that all of the schools have their monthly, um, any monthly drills, um, as well as the trainings that Receiver Nichols and Dr. Parkinson spoke about, um, and, and also helping the schools with the district's new crisis prevention plan. Uh, B5 is approval to award um, Ms. Micah Payne with the stipend for the 2022-2023 school year. So Ms. Payne will serve as the scheduling lead for all of our school safety officers. So um, she will be responsible with ensuring that all of, this, all of the schools are staffed adequately. So if there is a call out, she's able to disperse the staff amongst the district, as well as assisting us with the scheduling of overtime um, activities. So football events, those types of um, uh, those types of events as well. Um, and then B6 is approval of a school safety officer agreement with the Chester Upland School District. Um, our school safety officers were the only group that did not have a agreement that dictates, you know, what their employment terms are with the district. So we felt that it was um, important for us to show our appreciation to all of our staff so everyone has an agreement. So this concludes the final agreement for the school district. Um, and that includes my agenda items. Uh, yes. All right. Thank you, Dr. Plus. At this time, I hereby approve agenda personnel agenda items B1 through B6. Ms. Mosley. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I will be seeking approval for business agenda items C1 through C5. 
C1 is the report of the tax collectors in the amount of $215,032.35. C2 is the approval of the treasurer's report. C3 is approval of the list of payments in the amount of $2,547,820.31. C4 is approval of payrolls in the amount of $1,287,000. $879.13, and C5 is approval of special counsel to prosecute real estate tax assessment appeals. Just to give a little clarity on that, um, this is the company that we pay to go after, or I shouldn't say go after, right? <laughs> to um, anyone who appeals their property, we pay legal counsel to represent um, on behalf of the school district. And again, it is something uh, that can yield, depending on the appeal, can yield additional income for the school district on a continuing basis. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. I hereby approve business agenda items C1 through C5. All right. Dr. Sutton, up again. I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Essers, we have 11 agenda items that we're seeking approval for. Actually, 12, I'm sorry. Um, D1 is a renewal of Wilson Language Foundations program for Stetzer, Main Street, and CUSA. Um, it's a program that assists with foundations, I mean, with phonics and phonemic awareness, encoding, decoding, comprehension, fluency, all that good stuff. But it supports our um, core reading program, which is into reading um, across the district. D2 is the approval for Percy Bland to provide professional development at Stetcher Elementary School um, during the 22-23 school year. This is part of Dr. Green's and Stetcher's goals to engage families more and help teachers build relationships with students. So Dr. Bland, who is the author of My Teacher Doesn't Like Me, he'll be providing six sessions there at Stetcher throughout the school year. Um, D3. Approval for Monique Hells and Tammy Strand Yarbray to attend the Pennsylvania Association Federal Programs Coordinators Summer Leadership Forum. So I think that's self explanatory as well. Um, D4, approval to purchase flutophones, recorders for CUSA, Main Street, and Stetzer. This is part of our music initiative across the district to have students play instruments. Um, D5, Approval for purchasing of the Supplemental Technology Support Class Tag. This is a renewal. This is how we send mass communications to families throughout the district, uh, whether it's through central office or in the classroom, or classroom teachers, I should say. D7, approval for Glen Ford to provide STEAM-related after-school sessions at Toby Farms during the 22-23 school year. Um, so we have about 20 students who will be able to be um, a part of this program here where our students at Toby will be building rowboats um, and then at the end of the year they will then go to some kind of lake or river and then get on them and row them. So <laughs> that'll happen at the end of the school year. So this is a, a year-long process. I have no idea where we're going to store these boats, but we're going to paint them and make them look good. And then it'll be something that the community, community can be proud of. So that'll be happening at Toby starting in November of this year through May. Um, B8, approval to purchase scholastic <laughs> education libraries for K-8 classrooms at Stetzer, Main Street, CUSA, Toby Farms, and STEM. Um, you know, part of our initiative is to have students read, and we have a, a huge literacy initiative. Uh, we want students reading daily, um, independently, as well as in small groups. This allows us to purchase classroom libraries for every classroom in the district, every K-8 classroom in the district. So. Um, this is one step to us having our students read. Um, you will not see Edgemont here because they already have classroom libraries. B9, um, this is renewal for supplemental curriculum, Savis pre-calculus and statistics and calculus licenses. This is for our digital programs um, over at STEM. B10, approval for supplemental technology support SMORE. SMORT is a software to help principals and um, our leadership team here develop newsletters to send out to our community. Last year, our principals purchased the SMORT licenses on their own, but we decided to purchase a district license for them to use moving forward. And it's you know, $1,300. Um, B11, 
approval to purchase supplemental, I shouldn't say it like that, Ms. Mosley, Supple <laughs> approval to purchase supplemental <laughs> curriculum resource, New Zella. This is a renewal that's also used um, in grades three through 12 throughout the district. Um, it has science materials um, that can be manipulated to the students, um, reading abilities, so science materials, social emotional learning materials, um, and regular just ELA materials that can be used in the classroom. Again, it can be manipulated so that um, student, all students can access the materials, and that's our, that's our priority and our goal. D12, approval to enter into partnership with the career through culinary arts program to provide curriculum enrichment for culinary arts students. Um, this is for our culinary arts CTE program. This, again, is a renewal um, to provide professional development and culinary arts curriculum that our teacher can use um, to support instruction. So those are the 12 or 13 items that we have for ESSERS. Mr. Nichols. Thank you, Dr. Sutton. At this time, I hereby approve uh, ESSER agenda items D1 through D12. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, at this time, we will move on to our public comment section of the agenda. Before we do that, I will like to make this one announcement. We are uh, diligently uh, working to address the homestead issue. So there will be a statement placed on the district's website, also a video on the district's website describing the homestead uh, issue and or correction. And also our third party uh, uh, company that does our real estate taxes will be sending out notices to all of those affected parties, homestead parties. Uh, that letter should be mailed out, I'm thinking tomorrow or Monday at the latest. But our legal team finalized everything, the gruesome details today. And we will be getting that information out as soon as possible. But again, I would like to reiterate that there unfortunately was a mistake made uh, prior to the arrival of this team and the only thing that we are doing is what the state requires us to do and we're correcting a mistake. We understand that this issue may uh, have, we know that it has an effect on many, many of our seniors and our residents. But again, we're gonna work with you all to ensure that we can extend our, our, our discount period and not have any penalties for those affected by the homestead um, the district and, and the, the lawyers told, told us that we were crazy because legally we, we can go back and actually collect the taxes that we missed out on in prior years, but we're not going to do that. We are not going to do that because it was a mistake that someone made uh, here in the district and we just want to right the wrong and move forward and do the right thing moving forward. Again, we understand that it, it's a little painful, but that letter will detail that information and we will make every accommodation that we legally can make to uh, address the issue that happened on our behalf. And again, we apologize for that. Well, I apologize for my predecessors, I'll say with an S, because this administration actually did it the proper way. All right, so we will have Ms. Karen Maya, 904 Pusey Street, Chester, PA. Three minutes uh, at the podium. Mr. Jarman has his timer ready to rock and roll. Good evening. My first concern is the appearance of the main office in the high school. Um, when we receive parents and staff, the tiles are missing in the ceiling, old tiles with brown stains and tiles missing in the principal's office. My second concern <coughs> is there are blue and white balls in the lobby of the third floor, and our colors are orange and black. They've been up there for about a couple of years. I would like to have them taken down. The third thing is... Ken, I'm sorry, blue and... White blue balls. and white. Mm -hmm. um, they're up in the ceiling. The next thing is, do the students in the high school use the locker rooms? Does anyone know whether or not they use the locker rooms for gym? Nobody knows? No? Okay. Well, anyway, if, when you get a chance, please go in there and look. It's horrible. Um, the girls' locker room is horrible. Um, the football team actually uses the girls' locker room to shower because the shower and the boys' locker room does not work. So I know that we're doing a lot of renovations, and I know you're going into a pretty building. I just want to make sure our building is pretty here also. 
Um, there is no hand sanitizer near the cafeteria or library. The water fountain near the library is not working. Um, will there be a room for the cheerleaders to change in, leave their bags in during the basketball season? And it would be nice because under Title IX, whatever you do for the boys, you have to do for the girls. And the boys have a very nice locker room. And it would be nice for the girls' basketball team to have a very nice locker room also. Um, and my last question is, um, at the school board meeting, I asked a question, and I was told that, that it was not the correct form to ask the question. So I'm gonna ask you, if I have a question regarding the school board, when do I ask the question? Do I ask it at the receiver's meeting or do I ask it at the school board meeting? If, if you have a question for the for school board members? Yes. At the school board meeting. Okay. All right. They told me that I was in, not supposed to answer. At the committee, it. yeah, the meeting, the, the week prior to this meeting. Yes. Yes. Okay. No, I just asked that question because I did ask a question, but they told me I was at the incorrect meeting, so I wasn't sure. When I'm, what meeting I'm supposed to ask, so they told me come to them. I've already, asked, I've already had an answer, but I just want to know for a point of clarification for the future. If, if you have a question for the school board, that would be at the school board committee meeting. The okay. week prior to the receiver's meeting. And everybody knows that, right? If they don't, they know it now. Okay, just want to make sure. So my question is, are you going to answer more? So our new format, Ms. Maya, is that we're taking a public comment, taking your questions, and we're going to be placing them on our website with the answers. That's the new format. Okay. One more thing. Mm -hmm. So you're doing, you're talking about in the next five years, you're going to do a new, a new school, I think a new high school, maybe where STEM is. Well, if that's the case, what would happen to Chester High School? Um, Chester High School will still be Chester High School. It's so we would have two. So you would just extend STEM and then we would still have Chester so High School? So it's not necessarily STEM, but we can get into that. Um, and again, that's going to be with a lot of community input to okay. see what's the best needs for Chester Upland. My goal, uh, and Dr., I think, I don't know if you were here or not, we've increased enrollment by about 500 students over last year. So we want to continue to increase enrollment and we, we, need, we need buildings. So. Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks. Um, I, I know that we say that we're going to put the question, I just want general statements about the, the cleanliness of all of our buildings and the curb appeal is something that, again, uh, I'll be quite honest and frank, I was not happy about the way that things look when I returned back here on Monday. Neither were uh, the assistant superintendent or superintendent of schools. So we, we're going to make sure that come Hell of high water. Oh, can I say that in the school board meeting? Oh, I already said it. That by, by the opening of school, that everything will be intact and in place. So there is an aggressive plan to address those concerns because they are concerns that we all have. All right. So our next person is Ms. Charlotte Beverly, 712 Ward Street, Chester, PA. Yes, because my statements have been addressed. Thank you, Ms. Beverly. All right. Ms. A. Jean Arnold. I feel like I want to say, may I approach the bench, Your Honor. Miss <laughs> um, Mosley, uh, I feel like I have neglected you a little bit, so I have a few questions for you tonight in the financial area. Uh, I have 32 items that I was concerned about, and I sent an email to uh, our receiver so that uh, they could go on record and possibly be discussed, and he has agreed to talk about them, but I did want to mention a couple of them tonight for the record, if I can do so. Uh, in regards to finances, no, let me start out by saying this for effect. I have five dollars here. If anybody can say to me that they found very easily the agenda for tonight's meeting on the website. I am very concerned about that, and rather than be angry about it, I decided to try to make a joke about it and offer $5 so that uh, we could all laugh about it. Enough already. Every month, it is difficult for us to find the agenda. And it's there, but I had to click on last month's agenda to find this month's agenda. And to me, the logic of that was missing, at least the way I think about it. And uh, that red ink that we have that lists the dates, 
did not have tonight's meeting there. It had last month's meeting there. So um, it was there, but it was too difficult to find, I think. So that's the point that I wish to make. Uh, other items about financing. We have a contract, as I understand it, a three-year contract with the Montgomery County IU, and my last understanding was that we were paying them $3 million a month to be uh, vendors for us, and what I would like... Not $3 million a month. I will hope it wasn't $3 million a month. Well, I remember that issue coming up in court way back then. It was there. $3 million for the year, not the month. No, I... I oh, okay. What someone thought it was, was three million for three years, and then it came up in court that it was three millions for three months, for three years, three million a month for three years, which would have made it nine million dollars for three years, as opposed to three million dollars for three years. So, for clarity's sake, um, it would be important if we were to know how much money we have contracted with for the Montgomery County IU, how long is that contract, and what we are getting for it. When I tried to find a check paid for the Montgomery County, County IU, wasn't able to do that. So uh, that's one of the items that I was wondering about uh, in terms of our cash disbursements and what have you. So some of the other items I have on here is, can we at some point talk about the funding source for 1350 and 1450? Um, can we talk about the asynchronous days each month on the calendar. I thought there was an awful lot where the children would not be in class. Uh, it's on our calendar. As we consider professional development for all, I would like for us to think about throughout the school year that we have professional development for those who are doing maintenance, etc., all the way up to you guys who are doing administrative duties uh, for the district. So I'm sorry, I don't know this, the three minutes is, uh, expired. Can I be difficult? <laughs> well, Ms. Arnold, we have a meeting. We're, we're scheduling a meeting, so we'll, uh, we'll uh, address your concerns, and I'll be perfectly honest. Your 32 questions I will most certainly put on our busy website in a prominent place, and I'm not being facetious, so that we're answering them and everyone can, yes. you know. Because the community doesn't know a lot of what we're talking about, right. and I really wanted to say that for their benefit because <laughs> I'm so very concerned still about transparency mm -hmm. and how much stuff we miss and the public doesn't really have a, a good hearing about it. So that was the reason why I wanted to do my other items. Um, All right, so yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that this is posted on the website. Yes, and one thing I'm gonna squeeze this in here. We need an accountability for everybody and I appreciate your state of the district reports and I'm going to ask that we find a creative way to continue that as you're planning to do, but have a real comprehensive accountability report card for everybody in the district. I mean, not only should the children get report cards, but the grown people too. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. And I, I do some things, I'm just, I just have to say, uh, the, the website is something I know that we are actively working on to address to make it more user friendly. Um, I believe Ms. Teller, you and our IT folk and some others are having some conversation. I'll be honest, I've been kind of surfing the web and looking at other district websites that are very user friendly and have information uh, on there that, that we, we have, but it's just buried. Um, one thing I'll say about the agendas, and I'm, again, I told the board and I had this discussion and I said that you can be upset with me. Um, if you like, but I'm going to continue to say it. We, we, we sometimes talk about, you know, we don't have what other school districts have and, you know, we deserve the same thing. So the other school districts use board docs, and I have to stress that. We were probably the last school district in this area to, uh, to adopt that model, and now we have it. All of this information, and I'm, I'm telling the public, I'm playing with the public, www.boarddocs.com, you type in Chester Upland School District, all of this information is there and accessible. They have an app. You can download it to your phone. The agenda is there. You can look at it as we're in a meeting. The documents that are attached, the resolutions, 
they're all there. Board docs. Paper, I I'm going green. I'd much rather give the rings of paper to the students of Chester Upland School District than make copies. These packets sometimes are 50 to 60 pages for one packet. And I'm here to provide resources for kids, not adults. No offense, adults. But I think adults have resources that they can use technology to get this information. But I want to stress that we want, I want you to use board docs and we'll have some tutorials on it. I think we should do that maybe. So that people can get a better feeling and understanding of it. And they can have that information that is there and accessible for the public. All right. So our next person that we have is Ms. Uh, Denise Mosley, folio number 49110170300. Good evening. Um, I don't want my three minutes to start yet. I just have a comment to Dr. Sutton. Maybe we can, instead of saying boats, we can call them the clipper ships. Okay. Just a thought. Um, I had a question about the superintendent's report um, based on the numbers. I believe you said we are enrolled at 3178 and prior we were around 2700, which um, Receiver Nichols stated is about 478. However, when you mentioned the um, Edgemont Scholars Academy, you said it was 383. And I'm wondering, is that the uh, expected enrollment that we inherited or have we lost or gained enrollment at that school so i you i don't expect you to have it right now but i do want to know because if that was 383 um to that 478 so we probably picked up maybe about a hundred additional children not counting um the, the uh, edgemont scholars but i just want to make sure that that's accurate also um on um, agenda item C3 under capital funds, that's still showing as a zero. And I know that there are many projects that we have talked about involving air conditioning, involving revamp revamping bathrooms, but yet capital um, funds shows as a zero. So I would like an update on where are we with capital projects and when are we um, for the schools where children will be in going to address those types of capital project needs and then i think it was one oh also about i think two months ago we um, stated that there was an administrative flow chart but it's still not yet posted to the website, and I feel like that should be disseminated. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Mosley. And again, uh, as all of these public comments come before us this evening, we are going to make sure that within uh, three business days, the, the question and answer are posted to the website. Site. Um, I, I'm going to try my best my tech folk to make sure that they are prominently on the website so people can see frequently asked questions. I don't know what we want to call it, but we'll call it something so that people can click that tab and look at these questions and they're there. A part of the reason I wanted to do it that way is because we talk about accountability. We want people to hold us accountable. We want to be able to go back and reference things that are on that site, you know, as questions come before this body. So we will have these uh, questions answered within uh, three business days. I know Dr. Parkinson first said we'll have it done within uh, 48 hours. And then I said, well, our meetings are Thursday, then it's Friday, you never know what the heck happens, and then there's Saturday, Sunday. So I'm saying three business days, which will give us the close of business on Tuesday to have this stuff up on our site. You know, um, one thing, uh, uh, I, I can't help myself. But I'll talk about that enrollment. I know, uh, Ms. Mosley, that eighth grade class was included in that 440 so students that we had at, at, uh, at, at that school. So the eighth grade class is out now. 
and we are picking up enrollment in the kindergarten children that are coming in. So that's a delta there, but we'll get those exact numbers. But I wanted to make that point to keep that in mind that when we initially started this transition, you know, we had eighth graders that are no longer with us, and of course they matriculated onto high school. So, but we'll make sure that we answer the questions. Uh, all minds are clear, hearts are clear. I said that wrong. I haven't eaten all day and I have a migraine. But uh, if there's nothing else, this meeting is here by adjournment. Thank you. All hearts and minds are clear. That's all what it is. Come on, Ms. Bibb. You were supposed to get me with that.